Frank Nader. I'm back on the road for the virtual tour. I got my man, JB, Jay Brooks, the co-founder of Trap Art. You know, he the one half of it. I know these guys have been rocking with these guys for a while for a while now since I've been here in the Bay Area. Jay Brooks, tell us how you is, man. How you feeling? Oh man, I'm cooling, man. Appreciate you having me on. Dope vision, man. <laughs> Absolutely, man. So I've been rocking with them since probably about 2015, kind of got in the bay myself, kind of hitting the scene, kind of hitting a couple of parties and, you know, came across this this dope event. And, uh, you know, I went a couple of times and I was like, man, I got to be a part of this somehow, man. I can't come back here and just be be a part of it, just part. And I want to go in the back end, you know what I'm saying? I, do, I was running around Atlanta doing some photography. I was like, man, I can do that out here. You know what I'm saying? Hit JB up. He was like, man, just slide through, man. I remember that first night, man, kind of going downtown SF. We was at the little small venue then. That's when the when the, when the, the trap bar was kind of just starting to boom a little bit. You know what I'm saying? They had little, they were jumping around from Oakland to SF, kind of hitting the city. He was like, man, slide through. I got there a little early the first night, and it was kind of wild that first night, that first encounter. But it was Gucci, man. I really enjoyed myself, man. So, you know, what you guys been doing, I really appreciate you guys letting me be a part of that, man. So with that being said, you know, where did this all come about? I know you've probably been asked this a ton of time, but, you know, for the people who don't know about where the trap art started, how did this all come to fruition for you? Oh, man. Um, so me and my wife, Amina, um, we just, uh, we were doing, we were party promoters. And so we was all, we was doing events um, back in like, I don't know, we started about 2010. And then like, uh, we were in San Francisco doing events. And we did a, uh, we were doing an event at a 111 Minute Gallery. And honestly, man, it just, it just was an organic, a organic thing. Like it wasn't really like we sat there and planned it out. Like one day we was doing an event and we was like, man, this is nice. This is a nice venue. Let's put some artists, like, let's put, let's put some artists in there. And I think we watched like a Basquiat documentary. So that kind of inspired us to, to uh, try to create like a little art vibe. But, um, you know, we just grabbed a few artists, put, put them in there. And then ever since then, it's kind of like just gradually uh, just went, went the direction in where it's at now. Yeah, man, I know it was like, it, that, that was like perfect for me because I had just came from Atlanta. You know, I had just, I had under, got my undergrad in graphic design. So I was all into the art, but you know what I'm saying? Out there in Atlanta, it really wasn't popping like that. You know, it was almost like you got to have the bottles, you know what I'm saying? You got yeah. the sections, you got to have the cars. That's what it was about. It was about more like a show than anything. But like when I kind of hit the trap, I was like, man, this is different. The vibe different. You try to explain to people, but you can't. But if they haven't seen it, you can't really explain it to them. But, you know, you tell them, like, oh, man, it's a party. We got, you got artists in there. They're doing art. And, you know, such and such. And they're like, what? Huh? But then when you kind of go it for yourself, it's like a totally different thing. So, you know, what you guys, like, in the beginning, I know it wasn't just, like, automatically the trap booming with the first couple of events. So what kind of made you guys just stick with that idea? Because I know with the progression of, like, events, you probably try something once. If it kind of worked, you'll maybe do it again. But the second time is not always like the first time or the third time. It's just different. So at what point did you guys say, hey, man, this is working. Let's stick with it. Man, uh, I, I'm not sure when the, when we was like, let's, let's, let's stick with it. Like, it was like, I don't know, it was just, I forget which, honestly, I forget which event it was, but I feel like we started doing trap art events. Uh, I think we, we did like, uh, it was called Trap Holiday at first. That's the funny part. It was called Trap Holiday. And I don't know, the vibe was just cool. It's just like, we just kept on doing it. And then, I don't know about, it was like probably like about, I don't know, maybe a, a few months in, a few months in while doing it, we were still doing our other parties, our other events. And we just kind of start phasing them out. Cause number one, we was enjoying, we was enjoying the vibe that we was creating with trap art uh, more than the other events. And it was, uh, it was actually being more, it was more successful than the other events too. So it's like, well, you know, it's like, all right, let's time to phase that out. And then, um, I don't know, it was like a few a few months, man, where we just was start doing it and we was like, all right, let's just keep on keep on going and then um you know, then just people started responding and, and it was uh the beginning, the beginning, like right around right around when you came, that was like, you know, that was probably like the best like the you know, that beginning is what but everybody's searching for that like, you know, but um that was that was that was a pretty cool time though. Yeah, I remember, man. Like, you know, I had went to maybe about two, 
maybe three events, and then I kind of caught it one time. We was we was in I think we was in Oakland. I can't remember exactly where we was at. I think we was in SF. And I, I hit you, I was like, bro, I like, man, what I got to do, you know, so I want to be a part of, I do photography. You just like, man, just come through, you know what I'm saying, slide through. Mm -hmm. And you was like, you were cool about it, you know, so you know, running around Atlanta, you know, you're trying to get on and you're trying to do stuff, you're trying to let people know, because photography is not always like the glitz and glam part of it, and people not, they don't really take that part of it as serious as they take the DJ and the, the bars and all the other stuff. So when when you said, yeah, I was like, man, I can do this. I already know. I already I was already doing it in Atlanta, but you know what I'm saying, to try to bring that to the to, to the bay, it was just a whole totally different vibe. So I already knew that I didn't know nobody. Nobody knew me. So I was like, man, I just got to put my foot forward and just try it and try to get out here and show myself and let people know that I'm serious about this. And so you guys gave me the opportunity and we continued to grow. And then you said, you guys say, okay, let's, let's kind of, let's, let's try this magazine thing out. So we kind of, you know, saying you guys were flushing out new ideas and constantly coming up with new things. So as it began to progress, you know, as the fashion show started and the magazine started, we just saw a whole, a whole just umbrella of just trap art things started to pop off. As the party continued to grow, like where in that in that standpoint did you see that say, hey man, this this magazine might be something we want to do for the bait? Like what 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 made you guys want to kind of really push forward and do that? And um what made us do the magazine, man? Um I don't know, it was just like, you know, like you said, like, you know, you be at these events and uh, you know, it's just a vibe when you go in there. You just got, you know, everybody, it seemed like a lot of people who or either showcasing or coming, you know, they got good energy. Everybody is uh, creative trying to, you know, it, it was just, it's more than just coming to a party. You know, it's people out there putting their passion on, on display. And it was kind of like, all right, how do we take that? You know, how do we take that energy and, and, and be able to work with these people and not just, you know, within these four hours of the events. And so, you know, yeah, man, we, we do the magazine. I remember we did that one shoot, uh, that Waikiki shoot right across the street from my house with you. That was like an epic shoot, man. That was like one of the first first ones in the in the magazine, uh, right across the street. That house, like I always, when I was a kid, I used to always uh, go by that house and it just looked like, it looked big. And I was like, man, that, that's a crazy house. And then it was crazy that, you know, that you was doing the shoot there with the, like Kiki and had all these models, all these uh, beautiful uh, models posing. And, you know, it's it just, it was a dope experience though, bro. Yeah, the vibe was crazy, you know, cause just kind of coming out and just seeing all these these young black queens getting together, you know, it's no bickering, no fighting, just kind of like coming coming together for a nice cause and doing something for Kiki. Cause she was like, I consider her one of the best designers in the base. She's doing it from scratch by hand. She's made all the designs, got all the all the ladies together and just putting some on display and just showing her craft and matching her craft. And I think something like that for what Trap Art has been doing is actually been giving people opportunity to just play their skills becomes because most of the time as an artist you don't really get that opportunity to to talk well to show your skills because a lot of times it's like oh we just got to show it on a gram or we got to show it you know here and there on the internet but you don't necessarily get a chance to show that in print or you don't get a chance to show it in person like as far as like when you're doing the fashion shows incorporating that um, tell us a little bit about how you guys decide to incorporate the fashion show within the trap bar because that's a progression in itself altogether as well Oh man, I man, you you tell me, man. You the you the one who uh you know you brought you 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 kind of put that bug in my ear. I remember I don't remember where we was at. I think we were shooting for the magazine. And we were shooting for the magazine in Oakland, uh over there by the water, I think. Like in uh you remember that when we was uh Um the um like the, the train station area. I forget what you call yeah, it. Yeah, over there. Now they got like a I think it's like a big um a condo. Condos. Yes, big condos over there, but we were shooting over there, and I remember uh, you talking about the fashion, and I was like, you know what, that 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 sound that sound like cool, like like you know, I remember we did fashion shows with like those other events we were doing, but it was different. But like, you know, when you said that, I was like, man, hmm, let's let's just try it out. So we did the casting call, and then a whole bunch of people came to the casting call, and then. um and that first fashion show, that uh, it was at Complex. I remember we just had uh, we had Vaughn. He he did the uh, did the paint on the runways. We had this dude make the runways, these runway blocks. Vaughn Vaughn Queso uh, painted on it. It was just like a whole like that part, you know, just like the 
the the getting it all together, you know, the getting the uh, getting all the different people having their different parts to making it happen. It was it was it was dope, man. It was epic, and then the, it was just like the first one, you know, the first fashion show. It was just like, whoa, this is different. It was different. It was we've been doing events at that time probably for a few years, but nothing like that. No no fashion show, and it was just like a um, a space where people where people could see like like you know look at me look at me you know all the art the designers the models and it was like a stage you know and it was um people was on the stage doing doing their thing man it was a that was that was one of them ones though yeah yeah and like i said man you know we were just because we were just vibing man you were vibing we were we were reading books the same books at the same time we was watching some of the same shows we were just kind of in the in the zone and was being creative together but you know as a as a creator like you know, yourself and your wife like how do you guys bring all that together how do you guys get coordinate all this type of stuff that goes on and know because a lot of people just come to the event and they just see oh they see it happen but you know how do you guys like tell them how do, how do you guys bring that together how do you guys bring all those people together and coordinate all this for to make this happen and give that one big night that big one big hurrah that everybody's just to see yeah i mean it's a lot of it's a lot of different moving pieces um and you know we both me me and amina we both have um you know our own roles and and things like you know uh, obviously you got to you gotta have a way to promote it and market it, and that's kind of, kind of thing that um, I guess I, that's my that's that's what I do. Like find ways to you know get the, uh, get the word out. You know get people involved, um, and that's something that you know it probably takes a few months to do. Um, and then Amina, she does a lot of like the back end work, a lot of the, um, a lot of the emailing, a lot of the just working with the spreadsheets and just uh, texting the people that's involved, just coordinating things. So it's just, it's a lot. I mean, it's, it's not like, you know, rocket science or nothing, but it is, you, I mean, you, you gotta, you gotta do it though. You feel me? And, um, you know, we just, I mean, we've been doing it for so long. So it's, it's just, you know, it's like how you work your job, you know, like shit, you just do it. Yeah, absolutely. How's that, how's that dynamic duo? How do you guys, work together as a couple because like some people they can't some couples they can't even put a desk together so how do you guys make it work you know how do you guys make that work when you guys are both you know, like working together living together everything just yeah. every day you're together and you also you know trying to make money together how do you guys make that work and how do you guys separate that when it's time to say okay we need to take a we need to take a break from the work and let's kind of you know take time for ourselves yeah, yeah. I mean, overall, overall, I think it's uh, definitely more positive than negative. So if it was if it was more negative, then we wouldn't be doing it. But um, I mean, it's like, I mean, it's just, it's just we've been that's what we've been doing. So we always been doing it, and like, you know, um, pretty much damn near uh, as long as we've been together, um, maybe about a year. We wasn't doing it for like the first year or something together, but. A, for like damn near the whole time we've been together, we've been we've been working together and we've just been in business with each other. I guess you could say that. Um, but I mean, it's you know, it's it's cool though because it's like you know, we we able to we're able to vent to each other about issues. You know, it's like I know that you know we we take things differently. Like it's not like we're the same person, but it's like you know, if I'm frustrated about something. You know, at least I know she can understand where I'm coming from, or even if she don't think it's like valid, or vice versa. If she's frustrated about dealing with, you know, the, all the type of stuff you got to deal with when you got your own business and stuff. So, you know, we just able to kind of uh, be there for each other in that. And I mean, like, but it's not like no perfect thing. Like, of course, you know, it's times where you know we uh, <laughs> we might get frustrated at each other because, you know, we just. I mean, it's a you know, doing being in business, it's not the um, you know you're gonna have those moments where you kind of frustrated or stressed out or whatever you want to call it. But um, overall, like I said, overall, it's um, I think it's been been a great thing. And um, you know, we just you know with me just trying to like yeah, like you said, um, being able to turn it off and stuff like that's something that you know I think you have to do. Like you can't just be a hundred percent go 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 because 
you know, she might not want to be like that, you know, or I might not be want to want to be like that, you know, it might be, I might be watching football one day and I don't feel like talking about nothing like that, you know, so it's just balancing that out, man. But um, overall, I think, I think we, um, you know, we're working through it, working, and it's, it's, it's cool though. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, just being around you guys, seeing that, you know, seeing that relationship from you guys, I really cherish that too, because myself being married to my wife for 10 years and then seeing somebody else, another black man being married to his wife and in business and doing the right things, you know, having kids and being a father and being there. So how does it, you know, how do you guys take time with the kids when you say, hey, we need to take a break, take a step back, you know, let's kind of spend time with the family. What kind of things are you guys doing outside of the, just outside of the business and spending time with the kids? How, because you guys are, your family is growing and I kind of hit my, hit my number and you guys are still growing. So as far as a, as far as a, as far as a dad, like how do you treat that? You know, when do you know, when do you know how to, what, at what point do you know to turn it off? Say, hey man, I need to be a dad right now and not be all up into the business. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's a good question. Um, I mean, it's just like, you know, you wake up, I feel like I try to, I feel like I try to do a lot of, like, if I want to do some things for, for work, business related, I try to do it in the morning, you know, right, right when I get up. I mean, I try to, sometimes I'm not able to, cause you know, the kid, like somebody might have to tend to somebody, but um, try to get it out earlier and then you know, if I'm doing stuff throughout the day, like, you know, on the phone and stuff, I just, you know, got to check myself um, and just be like, you know, all right, got the little ones around, like, all right, let's, let me, like, give attention to them. And, you know, just, I wouldn't feel right if I was just on my phone working all day. Like, that that, I, that wouldn't make me feel right. I, I'll probably have anxiety, like, all right, I'm not doing my job. You know, I'm not doing my job, like, you know, the kids, like, they, that's, they, they, I mean, you know, you know, the kids is everything, bro. Like, the kids is, like, everything, you know. And so, it's like, all right, well, you know, it's like, just, I mean, shit, we got 24 hours in the day. I don't be up 24 hours in the day, but we be sleep. So, we get up, and it's like, all right, well, if I'm not doing the work, you know, give my energy to the kids, and um, shit, sometimes they let me relax, sometimes they don't, but just, just trying to be attentive to them, like, you know, and do little activities or just play, little run around, uh, throw them around, play hide and go seek, you know, just little little stuff like that. Absolutely. Absolutely, man. I, I totally get it because, some, you know, you're working and you got to have time for the kids because the kids want their attention. You got to get a wife attention. You got to get your business attention. And that takes a lot. You know, that takes a lot, you know, being a black dad. They, they try to say that we're not there for our kids, but we're definitely there. You, you're definitely one of those examples because anytime we're around, we're doing a shoot or we got some, you know, some collaborative things going on. You guys got the family right there with you. So it's not like you can't say, oh, he's not, you know, being with his kids. He's not doing the right thing. So I, I see that and other people see that. And as, you know, as we take a shift back to talk about the business, you know, as trap art, you know, it is a business, but people don't really, sometimes they don't really see that side of it because they just see the end result, you know, but taking a step back, you know, as the business continue uh, continue to grow over the years, you kind of expand it to different cities. Like, how did you come? How did you come about with that idea? Say, hey, look, let's expand to a different city, and as as well as when you're expanding, what were the cities that you had in mind when you first wanted to go out there, go outside of the Bay Area? Uh, man, I mean, which is, I mean, we live in this age. You know, we live in the internet age. We over here right now. We talking on, we talk, we recording on Zoom and stuff. So it's like. You know, we we been doing stuff in the bay for a minute, but um, it was just like, all right, well, you know, I, I'm I'm sure there's a lot of other people outside of the bay who are creative and who will feel a, a need for this, um, and so we just, you know, we just L A was the first one though. L A was like L A was the one that we wanted to to get it, the next market we wanted to, because you know we were so we were doing the events in the Bay for a few years and I, we had like a nice following out here. And I feel like, you know, people from the Bay, a lot of people from the Bay moved to LA or, you know, it's just close. And so they could feel that. I feel like LA could feel it uh, the most. Like they kind of knew about us. We didn't really, you know, with other cities, we kind of have, you have to introduce yourself to, to people with LA. I feel like it was more so like when y'all come to LA, um, you know, when y'all come to LA, and so LA was the first one. And then after that, we just was like, all right, let's just, just try to uh, keep expanding to all these different markets. 
Absolutely. And and now I get you guys have been everywhere, you know, outside the country, you've been in the South, you've been in, in New York, you was you're heading to Miami, you know, LA, San Diego, Arizona, Chicago, you know, Detroit, what am I missing? Washington, uh, Washington DC, yeah, Washington DC. Um, I may be missing a couple of places, but you know, is it me starting with you guys and just seeing where you guys have gone from when I started with you guys to where you guys are now, it just seems like it's just such a, a phenomenal thing just to see something as small that kind of grew or, you know, month at a time, week at a time, year at a time, and it's just growing over and over, you know, year after year and just seeing the progress. So now we kind of hit a halt, you know, everybody kind of had to slow down with the pandemic. You know, how are you guys like kind of treating it now? What are you guys shifting your ideas to now? Yeah, yeah, no, that definitely was, a, that was a big shift, man. I was like, it was scary, but uh, just utilizing the internet more, like utilizing the internet and, and um, just thinking of things that we could provide for artists outside of just events. So we got, um, even with the magazine, with the magazine, not just, not like it was in print before, but now uh, we're doing a digital magazine. So, you know, just digitally, and with digital, you know, we're able to release it on a more consistent basis with, with print, you know, it's harder to, to print out these magazines and they cost more to print out, but with digitally, you could do it more consistently. So we've been able to do that more consistently. Um, so we got the digital magazine, you know, uh, we starting to do these IG live interviews, um, with, with artists. So we just, uh, interviewing artists like, and up, up and coming artists who are in our network. Um, and then we got like a creative directory, um, and so that's just like, you know, people basically, um, list, it's kind of like a LinkedIn except for, for artists, you know, and, um, just listing, you know, what they do, their avail availability, stuff like that. So we just trying to kind of get in more into that, um, utilize the internet more and, and I don't want to say become like an internet business or company, but just utilize utilize it more because there's still there's still a lot of opportunity out there and there's still a lot of like you know there's a lot of creatives out there who are looking uh for the opportunity to to uh get exposure and a platform and you know that's you know kind of test you as a creative to to give these people a, a platform and so what type of platform can we provide uh that isn't events because i mean when 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 covid when it's over, you know, that's still, that's going to be, you know, the events is definitely still going to be, you know, that's our favorite thing to do. But, um, but it's actually good trying to, it's, it's like, it's adding a different element to, to, to trap work. So, you know, we got all this, you know, before COVID, we didn't have all this other stuff going on and now we do. And so hopefully when COVID uh, is over, you know, we will be even more balanced. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> With the with the pandemic, it's actually been a, a good and a bad to it because the bad part of it, of course, we have to, you know, you know, stay in our bubble, try to make sure everybody's safe and make sure nobody's sick. But the good part is is it forces you to think differently because sometimes you kind of get in a rut of doing the same thing over and over and over and you kind of can exactly. stand the grind and you're just constantly in that same grind and you're in that mold and you're just working, you kind of got your, your laser focus on your goals and the things like that. But when we got hit COVID, it kind of made you take a step back. And now, like I said, as a creative, it makes you kind of rethink things, kind of add more, add, sharpen your tools and get a little bit more sharp on what you want to do going forward. And you add more things to your toolbox, which you probably wouldn't have had time to do in the beginning before before the virus and the pandemic hit. So I definitely understand what you're saying. Like, you know, me and myself trying to just kind of balance everything out, you know, with the family, the kids, and trying to get, get creative ideas out there. Like even myself, I, w I had always wanted to start the podcast. And I had talked about it, but I never just never had time to do it. But now that, you know, when the pandemic hit, I was like, oh, well, no more excuses. You might as well go ahead and do it now. So I totally mm -hmm. get coming from. So would you, you know, you guys have been working, a, you know, working trap art for, you know, almost 10, probably almost 10 years at what, about nine, 10 years at this point? Uh, like 2013. So probably like seven, like a solid seven, but um, uh, yeah, but a bit like doing events for 10, but like Trap Art started in 2013. Yeah, you know, and just seeing how, you know, just seeing the amazing growth that you guys have, you know, you, you know, going to Africa, London, Know, Canada just reaching just going way beyond that you probably could have imagined when you first started because if art probably just started off as just an idea let's try this kind of work let's continue to grow people kind of gravitated to it and you tend you tend to gravitate 
to things that actually start to uh, reap the you, you 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 gravitate to things that basically gives you back the energy that you put into it. So I saw that when I first came on the scene, I was like, man, this is dope. Like I don't know if nobody else see it, but I you know what I'm saying I see it and I, I need to be a part of this. So that's why I was like, really, I was ready to get on board, let it get down with you. And you guys have been, you know, giving me nothing but opportunity with open arms. And you know, I want to appreciate, show my gratitude to you guys, and let you guys know that I appreciate that. Oh man, appreciate you, man. You've been, they say you've been holding it down, man. And a lot of people then came and went, but <laughs> dope vision, he he, right there in the middle still, man. Yeah, I've been holding it, been, ro been rocking with you guys for a while, a while now, and I always try to be, you know, get down and stay down with people who rock with me, you know what I'm saying? That's how I roll, you know, I'm always, a, I'm a, I guess that's just my nature, I'm, I'm kind of loyal to the call until I get burnt or something like that, but, you know, I rock with people, you know, if I rock with you, I rock with you, you know, that's how I roll. You mm -hmm. know, we we just shift gears a little bit right now. I know, I know you're a big Niners fan. I know I've been rocking with the Niners since the Jerry Rice days, kind of been coming up and going. You know, over this past couple of weeks, what have you seen? I know all these crazy injuries has kind of happened. What do you see going forward for the Niners in the NFL as far as this pandemic and stuff going on? Man, <laughs> well, you know, brought my mood down. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, man, I'm. I don't know, man. We just, we just, it was just all right, man. You all right? Last year, it was so fun. It was like where you know we didn't have no expectations. Didn't have no expectations. It was kind of like, oh, we'll see. And then we just came out of nowhere, just you know, dominated. And then went to the Super Bowl and was so close, bro. So close to winning that. And then. um you know this, so this year it's like, all right, you you, you have those expectations. You got a lot of them people that you had last year. I think we returned like we, we lost what like Buckner, um, uh, Emmanuel Sanders brought the team back pretty much. Yeah, and brought you, the team back. You added, added added some new pieces. Added a, a, a Hall of Fame tackle to get man protect your quarterback. You got somebody, you know, Trent Williams going to protect the quarterback. He didn't even play last year. He come back. He want to be with the Niners and Shanahan. You know, we got everything locked in. You ready to go. Man, so, you know, them expectations is 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 pretty high. And then I, that's why I think, you know, whenever you have high expectations, you better be careful because, you know, shit, that's, that's when you get hurt the most. But, uh, man, that, honestly, the first game, I was disappointed, you know, and then this past game, man, that damn near killed me. When we lost, I think the the Boza, the Boza injury, that's that's to me is just like I just feel like he he was like the the best part of the defense. You know, he the one who going he was just dominator, the dominate, bro. And it's like we lost him for the year. That one hurt because I'm like, man, how are we really gonna compete? You know, I, we gonna get everybody else back. I think we are gonna get Kittle back. Sherman gonna be back. Jimmy G gonna be back. Everybody gonna be back, but Bozer, that's the one that hurt, man. Yeah, just to see some, just see a, a ACL tear and just a couple more injuries on that giant, on that Jets giant field or whatever. But then you look around, you look around NFL and you see, you know, Saquon go down. You see about, you know, 10, 11 just injuries just like that. Do you think that's because no preseason or just because guys just, you know, probably wasn't mm -hmm. training beforehand? And just kind of try to jump in the mix and make it happen. I don't know. That's some. Uh, that's some of Mina said too. She was like, "Man, it's probably because it wasn't no preseason." I'm like, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I think. I. I mean, this we this off season was crazy. Like, I mean, no preseason, no training camp. They didn't have no OTAs. You know, they just hopped straight into training camp. A weird training camp with no preseason. So, I mean, essentially, what we watching now is preseason. Essentially, so um, I mean that that definitely could be a possibility on that, man. Yeah, but just going back to go from no sports, you know, you go from no sports to having just all this sports going on at one time, and then being drawn in by football. Do you even care about the fans and some fans in the stadium, some fans not in the stadium? Does that even appeal to you when you're watching the game? Uh, no, nah, not when I'm watching the game. I don't care, but I I do wonder. I do wonder, like, you know, would how would it be different? You know, you kind of like, I don't know, I, I just love football. Football, NFL football, really. I just love that whole ritual, wake up Sunday. Uh, I just like it. I don't know. I just like, I always like watching football. And and so 
you know, you just wake up to Sunday, and you kind of like, you know, turn on TV, you kind of, I, I wanted to be fans there at these stadiums, you know, I just wanted, that's just what I'm used to, you know, um, but, but, you know, as a Niner fan, man, when they, when that, when that, when I turn on that game, I'm still, I'm still as invested as ever. So, you know. And you locked in. It don't even like I don't even look. They play the they play the crowd noise and all that type of stuff. I don't even really care about it. You just the product on the field is that good that you just really like I say you're vested and you locked in. You don't even and after a while you zone out. You don't even think about the crowd until they pan into the crowd and you don't like kick a field goal or something like that. And <laughs> to the crowd you don't see nobody there. But you know for the most part you're just watching the game and you just and plus you know when you, you if you're playing fantasy you're locked into fantasy so you're into it even more. Because you're looking around the league, you're trying to make sure all your guys doing good, and you also want to make sure that your team's doing good. So you have like invested interest in, into the game even more when you're playing the fantasy and stuff like that. So that just makes it a little bit more real. So when I look at the game, I'm like, hey, I don't even care about a fan. Like I don't even want to. I've been to a few of the games, and I would rather watch it on TV than even go to the game personally. Yeah, yeah, that for sure, for sure. I mean, easily. Like I like being comfortable, and then that traffic afterwards. That's I mean, it's cool though. It's fun going to games, but I, I'm more of a homebody too, though. Yeah, I like watching it. I've been to it. It just, you know, you don't see the replays like you want to see as if you were at home. You hear the commentators. So I take to it as if like it's normal. It's normal football to me. And I, you know, I've been happy that a lot of guys have been haven't been testing positive or anything like that. They've been kind of trying to. I know it's hard to, you know, align and, and try to coordinate all these players from all these different teams to try to make sure that they stay, stay healthy. And they're doing a good job the first two weeks, and we haven't heard any just crazy numbers that have been coming out. I'm pretty sure, you know, maybe one or two guys here and have probably been tested positive, but just more or less just the whole league has been, been doing a pretty good job. And then just shift from that to even just going to basketball. Like, have you been watching the basketball and keeping up to with the NBA? Man. You start? Yeah, man, I, I'm Denver, man. That's my team. That's my favorite team now. That, I, I don't know. I just, Jamal Murray, that boy, hey, I don't feel, hey, I'm a fan. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a new fan. I'm just like, that's who I've been, that's who I've been rooting for. I want, I want Denver to do it. I like, I like, I just like, I like Murray. I, I don't know. I just like him. This, this the bubble been crazy though, because I just feel like, you know, it's been a lot of new people, new new names. I guess you could say like, you know, you just it's not. I mean, obviously you got LeBron, you got AD, uh, but like you know, Harden and Westbrook, they kind of fell off a little bit, and you know, you got just all these the Luca, he was killing. Uh, I mean, Dame ain't a new name, but he was killing. But this dude, Murray, though, I really didn't know too much about him. But, oh, I'm a fan now. So you're killing me, you know. But then the late <laughs> and you just gonna throw, you're going to just throw Murray out there just like that? You know, after they just went put it, you know what I'm saying, put in some work last night and got that game. You know, we're up, still up. We're still going to make this happen. Lakers and <laughs> so I feel, you know, from the door, we're still Lakers and five. They, they're a great team. They fought, you know what I'm saying? But we just got to. Throw Dwight in the starting lineup, you know, jump on Joker back, get him upset, and kind of put you know, <laughs> put him in his hip pocket, you know what I'm saying, get him all frazzled or whatever it's going to take because uh, Joker be putting in that work. And like I said, Murray, like I, I just been enjoying the bubble at first because before the season, before, before the um, the ending of the season, well, when the pandemic hit and then they were talking about coming back, I had did a podcast and I talked about I was like, man, they're going to be an astronaut on the season. It, it's whoever wins this ain't going to, you know what I'm saying, and yeah. nothing when we look back on it. But now I have been watching it, it, it feels like the real playoffs, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, we yeah. pick up the games and these guys playing this, you know, stadium that they on there and they're just all included. They don't have to do any travel. They just kind of play back to back, you know, game here, game there. It was kind of crazy at first because they were playing, you know, every single day. And then now they have kind of have the games in between days and stuff like that. It's kind of slowed down to a tick. But just like you said, seeing new people just kind of popping up, like this Tyler Hero guy from, you know, Miami. He just kind of put in that work, you know what I'm saying, just being over the playoffs. You've been just watching these guys kind of progress and kind of grow up right in front of your eyes. And this bubble has kind of gave you that that that, that look into that, you know, that player that's like, hey, man, I got to see this guy every other night. And he's kind of been progressing over this period of time. You know, I've really been enjoying the bubble. So, you know, I still think it might be a small asterisk on the, on the season, almost like the lockout season. But it's just good to just see sports. You know, you have one day you have basketball, football, and then you got baseball going on all at the same time. You know, so it's been just wow. Yeah, man, we ain't never had, like, the finals is about to be going on during football season. I mean, so you, like, you, one day you watch. 
football and basketball all at the same time. So you're trying to watch something from your phone and watch something on your TV, but you're trying to keep keep in tune with everything that's going on, man. And just it's just been an exciting time for sports. And it's kind of like made us appreciate it more, I feel. Because at one point in time, you know, you have, you're watching basketball, you had a dog days, and it'd be a game on. You're like, ah, right, man, I'll catch, I catch the next one tomorrow. But now when they took, when God, when they basically took it away from us, and then all of a sudden now we just got to kind of sit and wait and watch the game. We watch all the games. Whether it's, I watch all the games, whether it's good or bad. Football, good or bad. It can be a blowout. I'm still watching the game. <laughs> hey, you, you over there appreciate, appreciative, appreciative. <laughs> yeah, man, you got to, man, because, you know, these games, man, you show how, how much you, how much when you don't have it, how much you miss it. Because we were just yes. taking it for granted that it was on. Like, you'll go see, you know what I'm saying, Braun will be on or somebody else will be on, and you'll be just like, all right, man, I catch the next game. Or I catch it when I get to the house or whatever. Or I record and I watch it later, or you don't get a chance to watch it. But when you, now it's like, when it's on, I'm, I'm a planning my day around it. I'll make sure I'm in front of the TV. <laughs> I'm tuned in. I'm locked in. Like, yeah, I got my popcorn red. I'm locked in. I'm ready to go, man. So, you know, as far as this bubble life, like, I think, I wonder what they could do going forward how they can make this work because I know right now with the with the, the pandemic we don't have a, a, a end in sight yet. So I know the season's probably gonna end and then the next season has to pick up maybe probably, you know, November, December or something, because you can't just go, you know, into September, October and then have these guys, you know, was it September and then go into October and then have these guys trying to come right back into the season for a full season. You know what I'm saying? For some yeah. channels, you still got another it's going to be like almost like three months these guys are going to be in that bubble. And then all of a sudden, yeah. I'm trying to tell them, okay, you had the finals, you're going to have, you know, six weeks to rest and then trying to come back. So I think it's going to be right back in the same predicament, but just all the teams going to, going to come back into the league. So I don't know how they're going to work it. You know, I don't know how they're going to do a big bubble. They probably had to do a bubble in different cities and then had the guys kind of, you know, come in between the cities and do it. That's, I guess that's just a topic for another day. But, you know, just kind of going back to what we were talking about, you know, Thinking about the things that's currently going on, have you heard about what happened with the Brianna situation? Man, I I I heard that basically they got off right. Yep. Like 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 I didn't. That's pretty much all I heard is that they basically they got off, and then they said something about um they got in trouble for firing into the neighbors' yeah. uh, room. Yep. So. And, and, and so that's pretty, yeah, it's crazy, man. So they basically um, gave him a slap on the wrist. You know, I saw I saw earlier um, in the week that they were calling all their officers, making sure they weren't going on vacation so they can make, they should make sure they'll be around for the ruling because they kind of know that, you know, I thought in my mind, I knew they knew what was going to happen going forward because last week they had already gave, um, Brian, they was, well, they had announced that they were going to give Brianna family, I guess, $12 million. So in my mind, I already knew what was coming. They were trying to soften the blow beforehand by giving them the money saying oh we're gonna give it to, give them the money try to let, try to ease the pain because they probably already knew that there was a plan in place that they weren't gonna arrest the guys and they were gonna just basically give them some type of charges and then it's gonna be probably uh lure them to type some type of misdemeanor and they're gonna get out and they end up getting a three count felony of some endangerment or fired in the wall fired into the wall or something like that which is the weirdest thing ever for to try to get them so you basically kick in the door go in I don't know who shot first, but some shots fired. But at the end of the day, a young lady who was in the house lost a life who had, that had nothing to do with, with nothing. She lost a life. And then all of a sudden now you just give this guy a, a three a three count felony count of endangerment or whatever they want to call it. That's something we never heard of before. Basically slap on the wrist with a $15,000 bun or some cash bun, which you know they were going to bun him out. My point is, I think that they just have too much power when it comes to situations like this. We try to... Yeah. And we talk about, you know, justice for Brianna, but what do you think we can do to kind of help uh, facilitate this change and try to get some of this power back? Man, that's 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 the million dollar question right there, though. I mean, in terms of like the police, um, I don't know, I was talking to my partners about this the other day, and like, you know, people be saying like, you know, what if, you know, it was more black men or not just men, but just black people in the like would that help if there was more if we was like more in the police departments and like i i mean there are black people in the police departments but i'm sure that's a tough position to be in you know like just to work for this institution but um i don't know honestly that's like 
you know, the policing and, and that system, like, that's, like, seems like, I just, I just don't know how, you know, like, you know, people, because, you know, we want to, we want them to be held accountable and stuff, but it's like they, they, they being judged by their peers, you know, so it's kind of like, it's kind of, it's, I don't, honestly, it's, it's hard for me to, to, to think of like solutions in terms of like to dealing with that. But I mean, obviously, you know, bringing awareness to, to, to the situations that's going on. I think that's, that's a start, you know, just at least people are, are aware of, of situations, you know, you got the cameras that's rolling. That's a, you know, that's, that's better than not having a camera. So just, I guess, bringing awareness to, to things to where that, so where that people, you know, can, um, you know, people can't just do things, whatever they want to do and not be held accountable for it. Even though, you know, it seems at times like, you know, that, I mean, yeah, it's been, I mean, cops always get away with, it. you know, they always, you know, they never, I mean, they could, you know, they, it, it take a lot for, for a cop probably to, to really go to jail. Like, I don't know what a cop would have to do to go to jail, but like, you know, if they gonna always have the upper hand, like, you know, like if they, I remember, I remember, um, I was like at a barber shop and they had like this police come, like, you know, like, it was like, talk to the people type thing, like talk to the community type shit. And he was like, you know, if I ever feel my life is, if I ever feel like my life isn't threatened, I'm a, I'm a go, I'm a, I'm a, um, basically saying like, that's how they, that's what they talk. They talk like if they ever feel anything, then they finna, you know, that, and so it's like, all right, well, if that's that's what they being taught, it's like, man, it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a tough situation. It's twenty twenty, it's crazy, and we still ain't figured it out. Yeah, man, I, I've definitely you know had my fair share of run-ins with the police, getting pulled over, snatched out the car, guns pointed at your head, throw it over the hood, put on the ground. You know, you go through this type of stuff as a black man, especially you know I lived in Mississippi, I lived in Florida, I lived in Georgia, so I've ran, I had my fair share of run-ins with the police, and it's just all like I said, is that training and that's that, that that mentality that you know. I have the power. I, you have to do whatever I say in this moment. I can do whatever I want to and get away with it. Like, I feel like they almost have to be, have some type of assessment done to the police officers every six to eight weeks. You know, you're outside, you know, of course, you know, them streets, they can be hard, you know, you know, everything is not peaches and cream and they can kind of go through a rough time, but that's no excuse for them. They're, they're trained to do that type of stuff. So that's why I think they need to have more, you know, mental, they need to have more mental assessments more often. If they don't have it now, they need to have it more often. Like they need we really sitting down having um, evaluations with these guys and ladies who are out in the streets and making sure that they're not super aggressive because they have personal lives, they're going through personal things too. And if they can't get that off somehow, what you gonna think they're gonna do? They're gonna take it to work and they're gonna get it out on a, on the person that they pull over on a young black man or young black woman. They're gonna get it out, they're gonna get their energy and their frustration out on them. So that's why they need to have more evaluations done to those, you know, men and women who are out in the streets because that's all it is a lot of the time. They get out, they jump on you and they already, you know, before you even, you know, say, tell you what you're doing, they already saying, hey, you, how many times you been in jail? What you doing? Why you got this? Get out the car. They got the guns drawn. They already got, you know, they're ready for it. They're amped up and they're ready. Like you shouldn't be like that when you pull somebody over for a speeding ticket or whatever the case may be, or, you know, you shouldn't just automatically just go to the extreme when you're actually pulling somebody over or stopping somebody as a police officer. There's no, there's no community action as much as it used to be. Like when I was growing up, we had the guys from the, from my neighborhoods, who grew up in our neighborhood, became police officers in our neighborhood. So they knew what, they knew what the deal was. They knew what was going on on the block. And you know what I'm saying? And the guys who were doing what they were doing, they respected the police and the police respected them. So it wasn't no more like somebody who coming outside of our neighborhood who don't know us coming into our neighborhood and policing us. So that's one of the yeah. things I see that goes on in, in a lot of the community, especially the community where I grew up in. Yeah, no, that that's I mean, yeah, that that would be like that that would be ideal, yeah, to have like people who from yeah, like that's what I'm saying, like people who from a certain area and you know, they from that area and so people know them and then they get, you know, they you know, they, they become a police and you know, people um could trust that person. Trust you know, trust you know, because people don't trust police and and police don't trust the people. So, you know, it's kinda like this 
you know, it's this tension that's built up, you know, and that tension isn't isn't healthy. You feel me? And it's not healthy and it's just um, you know, it's a it's a cold game. Like, man, it's it's like I said, it's you know, you being pulled over and every time you get pulled over, you know, your heart my heart starts to race. Like you you know, you just be like, you know, heart you know, but it's just like man. Get home. You want to want to get home. You know, you're doing whatever it takes to get home. Now you got to bite your tongue. Yes, sir. No, sir. Type deal. And that, that's not, that's not feeding their ego enough. So they want to make you get out the car and searching you and all this type of stuff. It's just a lot going on where I think, like I said, they need to have more evaluation done for people who are out serving them, you know, serving the community, especially if you're out on the beat every single day, and you are running into, you know, you in the you in a trap and you kinda, you know, busting down a trap every day. That wears on you as a person because you are you are a human being. And if you're not, you know, tending to your mental, then they can really take a toll on you, you know, yeah. daily actions when you run into somebody because you pre you have a preconceived notion of, all right, man, I'm already over here in the trap. If this guy do something, I already know what it's gonna be about. So I gotta be on standby. I gotta be ready to go. Like you said, you know. Like, it's, it's, it's a him or me type of situation that shouldn't be like that. You should be trying to protect the guy and try, you know, if it, you know, some people deserve to kind of have, you know, put in jail for things that they've done, but not to lose a life. Nobody should be, you know, losing their life. And the situation with Brianna was in, you know, it, it goes between the, the no-knock warrant, all this type of stuff, you know, you hear, you hear different things will happen on, but it doesn't matter. You shouldn't be going into a house in the middle of the night, you know what I'm saying? It's, it, when, so, when it's all said and done, there's a life that been, has been taken by one of your own and not being judged and being, you know, put to the, uh, the fullest extent of the law. Because if it was another individual going into the house in the middle of the night, shooting and killing, yeah. then they're going to get the full max penalty, you know, life, you know, kneel, whatever they want to do, they're going to give you the full max. But when it comes to the law officers, they don't get that. Yeah, man. I'm, and I just like, in the middle of the night, though, that's like, that is, that don't, that just don't sound smart if you're trying to, I don't know, I, I ain't no, I ain't never tried to apprehend nobody, but it just don't sound smart. Like, you trying to, because the, the boyfriend, he was, they was trying to get him, right? I uh, that they, they, they were saying this one of the guys who were doing something had a had a work had been with in a relationship with her or he had been seen at their location or something like that at some point. They had a reason. They they're trying to make in fact a reason for them to be at that particular location. Right. So I'm just saying, like, if you're trying to arrest somebody, like and yeah, if somebody come to your house in the middle of the night, that just that just don't sound like it's gonna go well. Like, you know, it's just, that just don't sound like if somebody break in your, your house in the middle of the night, like, I don't know, but you know, it's just, it's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how that, how that, like, I don't know that type of like, like maybe do it in a day or something like, or, you know, don't run up in, I don't, it's like, yeah, if you, if you about to arrest somebody and he, and so if you're arresting somebody and he got a gun and you got guns, it's like, you know, she, and you don't know who. And what if it was some kids in the house too? So you know, you don't know what, you don't know what's gonna happen. So I just feel like, man, they just, yeah, they just need. I don't know what they need. They just need like a more. They need somebody who. They need people who, you know, out maybe outside of they, they, they culture, outside of their policing culture, to to come in and, and you know, because I feel like if you if you grow up in that police environment. If you work in that environment, you know, you, you probably see things through one lens. And, you know, obviously they need to see things through a different lens. So, you know, so I think it needs to be some outside influences in there. I definitely understand. So, like I said, I just want to say, you know, rest in peace to Brianna Taylor. You know, things didn't go as if the way we wanted to see. We didn't want to, we wanted to see them get prose prosecuted to the fullest extent of the law, but it didn't happen. So, you know, we don't know where we go from here. We just want to make sure that we kind of tr try to stay safe as much as possible, continue to try to catch things on film, like you said, you know, because a lot of this stuff was happening before the cameras came on. Now we're just getting the opportunity to see it now and the world starting to see it. And, you know, other people are starting to see that these things that these rappers and other people have talked about in their raps and in their poems and just, and just any type of art and medium that they've kind of been expressing this type of thing to people. They haven't been hearing it, and, and but now they're getting the opportunity to see it 
and it's just kind of changing their perspective. But they still believe a lot of people still believe that you know it's it's our fault or it's that particular person's fault for doing this and doing that. But you know, with that being said, I just want to say you know just we want to continue to say justice for Brianna because we want to see the we want to see that justice. We want to get that justice because you know if if it's not her, it could be somebody else's daughter or somebody else's son because we're gonna to continue to go on and on and on. We don't want that. We want to see it stop. So, you know, with that, I just go ahead and close it out on her. You know, we'll make a shift back over to, you know, talk about, you know, the business and, you know, kind of got where you guys going from now. Like, what kind of ideas or what do you see, you know, your business for as Trap Art going forward in the next three to five years? What do you kind of got set up and kind of goals you got set up that you want to see the business go? Man, I, I mean, like, like, did like getting well. From number one, I want I want COVID to be over. <laughs> so whenever COVID over, you know, I want to I want to get back into doing these events. Like, you know, it's just nothing like like an event. It's just that's I don't know. Just being at an event that's that's a good successful event. Like that that really fulfilled me. You feel me? That just make me. It's just fun. Like you just be like, all right, this is this is just everything. Uh, but like, so just getting back to the events, honestly, and then, um, you know, just seeing how far we could do with the with the digital side and the internet side. And, um, you know, uh, we had reached out to a few um, programmers, computer programmers, and, you know, we just kind of like getting to know, getting to know them. They seem like some cool people. And so just, um, just figuring, you know, just honestly, man, just like wandering off and seeing, you know, where, um, where we could take it, whether it's with the, you know, with with uh, technology or what internet or or just wherever, man. Just but just honestly, just just wandering, man, and, and just honestly, just trying to keep innovating. And you know, I'm just at, you know, I just I'm at the point where I just want to, um, I just want to have fun. You know, I just want I just want to have fun. So it's like, whatever I do, I want to be able to uh, have fun with it. And you know, I mean, it's not all the way realistic to just have fun with with every with all the work aspects you know there are aspects that's tedious and you know that's work and you kind of got to be disciplined about certain things but in ter just in terms of general direction i just want to uh just have fun with it and uh you know just be creative and and, and just and, and be innovative try to try to try to think of new things Absolutely, man. You know, with business, with 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 opportunity, with with, ch with times like this, creates new opportunities. And being creative is one of the things that I really, you know, enjoy being around you guys because you guys are always thinking of new ideas and new things to kind of, you know, try to put forward into the community, into the ecosystem. Because that's what it takes. You know, you have to create an ecosystem that everybody can work together in, and that creates more ideas. And you know, somebody something's going to pop and something's going to go, but you just can't. You you won't be able to get to that point if you're not, you know, collaborating. That's what one of the biggest thing that I like about you guys, you guys are collaborating with a lot of different artists and a lot of different people and coming together, you know, some good, some bad, but that's just a good, that's just a part of the business, you know, as, as part of, you know, being part owner of Trap Art, you know, how does it feel to have your finger on the pulse with the community and, and with the ecosystem, you know, bringing people together? How does that feel? Oh man, that's, that's, um, I mean, that's, that's to me, that's a blessing to me, you know, just to feel like, you know, that's that, that my, uh, that my occupation is, you know, what what pays my bills is to uh, to be a to you know to be a a platform for people to to express their deepest passions and to you know give them a voice. You know, a lot of like a lot of these creatives, you know, they don't really um, you know have the 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 biggest platforms, you know, out yet, you know, and they they're working towards it and just to be able to 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 give people a voice or to, to make people, I don't know, to, to make people feel good. And that's to me, like, like I said, it's a blessing that that's my occupation. Um, and so I'm just, I'm just grateful that, that, um, you know, that, that I'm able to do that. And, you know, like I said, that's, that's, that's what, that's, 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 that's my, that's my job essentially. And, you know, I feel like, um, it's, it's a good, it's a great thing because, you know, it, it help you um step outside of yourself. It help you like be like think about what other people want. And it's like, all right, what do what can I give what what can I give other people that would actually benefit other people? And cause if I if I'm able to benefit other people then then that's gonna benefit 
the uh, trap work. So, it, but it, like really benefit them. Like not just like, you know, not just like, not just try to hustle people over or something like, but try to, you know, that's what, how do you, how do, how do, how do I, um, how do we try to um, think of new ways and things to, to make, uh, to benefit all these creatives that are out there. Absolutely. And just say, if a big brand came to you guys and said, say, hey, I want you guys to curate my event for you, would you guys do something like that? Would you guys be open-minded for to do something like that? Or you guys would just want to stick with your brand and continue to build your brand? And then at some point, if you feel like you, if it meshed with you guys, would you you'll want to do it at that point? Uh, no, I mean, we would be open to, I mean, we'd be open to looking at any, any, whatever, you know, if, if if there was a big brand that came, like I I wouldn't be closed off to it. So, I mean, I would be open to it, just depending on what it what it would entail. But I, I definitely would be I'm open minded. Yeah, and that's the thing about you know building business and building brands, and you know I believe the trap art brand is really stamped here in the culture in the Bay Area and as well as throughout the country. How do you guys continue? How do you guys want to continue to build a brand and get it to be recognized across the board and across the country to other other cities and states? Man, just I mean, just just keep on tapping in with with the art, with 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 like you know with our crowd. Like I, there's a million, there's there's just you know we got just a, there's just a lot of people all over, and not not even just the United States, but all over the world who are you know emerging artists or emerging creatives, and you know there's just that's just you know, and then you got Instagram. I don't know Instagram. I feel like you know people. It's I don't know, just artists are all over Instagram, create like just the fact that you could post pictures and stuff like that. I don't know, maybe that I feel like that's done something to the art community. But um, but I mean it's just there's just so many people out there. And so, you know, it's just trying to keep on connecting with all these people that, you know, that 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 are looking for exposure, that are looking to be people are looking to be appreciated. You know, that's 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 something that I really feel that I really believe that, you know, everybody wants to be appreciated and we want to be a, a place where, you know, we want to be a place where people can feel appreciated. Absolutely, man. That, that platform has been great for, you know, not only myself, but a ton of artists throughout the Bay, throughout the country, and just throughout, you know, the world as artists, you know, we always want to, you know, like I said, tap in with one another and continue to network and build. And this is something that, you know, that's going to be here for, I think, a long, for a long time that because, you know, this was an untapped market, you guys kind of tapped into it and you kind of, you know, molded it and created a, a new platform that wasn't there and I think that's what you guys saw the open part in the market and you guys you know kicked the door in built the community up and kind of like spread to spread the wings and the tentacles throughout the country and I you know like like I said I just want to continue to give you guys gratitude and say thank you guys you know for you know myself and a lot of a lot of other artists who you know was just doing it at the house and you know doing it for the family like myself I just like to do a lot of my art for me and you know for my house I don't really Sometimes I don't even get a chance to show it to a lot of different people because I create so much and I just kind of like do it and put it in the corner. But, you know, with a platform like this for a lot of people, this is their livelihood. You know, this is what they really you know that this is what they, they they use to put food on the table, you know, put clothes on the back for their families. And like I said, that community really is going to appreciate you. So, you know, with you being you know, co-founder, with you and your wife, you know, how are you guys going to continue to tap in, you know, not only with the Bay, but you're going to tap in with these other cities and make sure that they are then, you know, not, not only, you know, heard, but then seen. Are you guys going to continue to do fashion shows in other cities? You're going to continue to spread the magazine. Like how do you continue, how do you feel like, feel, feel like it's going to be ways that you guys can, can tap into more people and get the brand out there further? Yeah. I mean, with the, obviously with the events. So when COVID is over, we definitely want to, um, you know, continue to, to schedule events in different cities um so that and then like with the magazine um with the digital magazine like you know that's that's it, we you could be that's that's worldwide when i'm when i say that i mean like there's artists from all over who are in each issue of the magazine so each month there'll be artists from the bay to uh, toronto to whatever london or wherever memphis uh nashville so you know it's just detroit it's just the the digital services, um, the digital services, I feel like are are a big part of helping us um, just kind of 
tap in and connect with people, even if we aren't doing events. Like, you know, you, before it was like, all right, if we weren't in a certain city, we couldn't really do anything with, with, uh, with those people. Like, I mean, if we weren't like, let's say we weren't in New Orleans, we can't really do anything with New Orleans artists. But now we got all these, you know, like I said, we could do a IG live interviews. We're doing IG live interviews. We're doing the digital magazine and we might think of different things, different other, other services, but that way we could tap in with people beyond just events. And, you know, um, so just doing that and like digital side and, and the event side, that's, that's pretty much, um, what I think of right now, what I, what I can think of right now. Absolutely, man. Before we wrap up, uh, can you give the people one good advice for someone who might want to, you know, start something like this or get into this type of business? What's something that you can kind of give them, you know, some advice or some guidance on how to do something, what you guys have done or what you guys are into now? Man, one thing of advice, um, man, I'm trying to really think of something too. Uh, I would say, and I would say, um, I would say just open your horizons, you know, like just, I just feel like, you know, people, we, we are all individuals. We all have different influences. And, um, you know, I would say the broader your influences are like, you know, the, like if you're, if you, the more diverse your, your mentality is like, you know, if you're able to, you know, cause then you, you could bring something new to the table because, you know, um, if you just sitting there listening to what everybody else is listening to or music wise or into what everybody else is into, then it's going to be hard for you to come up with something that, that is different. And I feel like, you know, when you come up with something that's different, that's, that's really what, could, uh, you know, that's what helped things go. So I just feel like, you know, broadening, broadening um you know your horizons and you know and then just just having fun too honestly so you know just having fun with it and you know I just feel like man that we hardly ever do things go like we plan so you know just just have fun with it and um you know and, and just let it go Absolutely, man. And like I said, I want to say thank you to yourself along with the wife, Amina. You know, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. But before we go, you know, give some people some of the things that you got coming up and, you know, tap in with you, how to tap in with you. If they got something that you want to promote, you know, here's to go shoot it to them. Let them know what's up. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, man. Nitty bro. Appreciate you, man. Um, but um, shit, we just got the uh, the digital magazine. So that's on trapart.com slash magazine. Um, so, you know, if you want to check that out, you can go there. Or if you want to apply to the magazine, um, you could just go to our website. Honestly, just go to our website, trapart.com, or just go to our Instagram, uh, trapxart, and, you know, just tap in with us on Instagram or go to our website. You know, we have a lot of, uh, like I said, services that you could sign up for through our website right now. So if you want to be in a magazine, you can go uh, to trapart.com, be in a magazine. If you want to, if you want to be interviewed um, on, on our Instagram, you can sign up for that on our website. If you want to be in our creative directory to network with people from all over, you could sign up for that on our website too. So just go to chopart.com and uh, we'll take care of you. <laughs> and make sure you tap in with the IG page, Trap Art, Trap X Art on the Instagram. And you know what I'm saying? This your boy. It's me, Frank Nitt. If you want to tap in with your boy, you can hit me on Dovision SF on the gram, Dovision SF at gmail.com, anything like that. I said, like I said, I want to appreciate you guys. This has been a, a, a Trap Art, Dovision, you know, collaboration mm -hmm. from the Dovision Experience podcast. It's been virtual. I'm back on the road. I've been basically, you know, doing it all, you know, in-house, but I wanted to kind of tap in with my boy, J, my boy JB and kind of talk about some of this trap art stuff that people probably haven't heard in some of the small cities, but you, you, better, you better believe it. It's coming to your city as soon as this virus stuff is, is kind of put to, the, put to the side. We can take those masks off and start back crowding inside. We're going to be in your city, so tap in with us. Let's make it happen. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, man. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. It's your boy, Frank Nitt. I'm out. All right, what? All right, bet. All right.